Alright, we had a bit of a technical difficulty there. It's fine. No harm done. Looks like Alex is the one who lives here. Alex's room is up there. And he lives with his grandparents, George and Evelyn. How nice. Seems like George is a little bit unhappy. Um, probably because he's an invalid and he now has to live permanently in a, inside of a wheelchair. He's not happy about that, and I can see why. I don't blame him. Evelyn's a sweet lady, though. She's she'll she'll take care of him. Aubrey goes into the saloon, sees Gus standing behind the counter cleaning a, a glass. Aubrey is very suspicious of Gus. He seems to be infected with the repetition virus. Oh, hey, who's this? Is it Jody? Oh, uh, you aren't exactly how I imagined, but that's okay. I'm Jody, she says. It's a quiet little town, so it's very exciting when someone new moves in. Having a farmer around could really change things, she says. Here comes Caroline. Hmm, I wonder if I can get Pierre to cook dinner tonight, she says. Somewhat wistfully, she says good afternoon to Jody. Jody says good afternoon to Caroline. Everyone is happy and um, generally well adjusted and good friends with each other. So, how was your first night in the old cottage? Lewis says. Your grandpa used to complain about the rickety old bed, but I think deep down he actually loved that house. Well, Lewis, you're not wrong. He did call it, what, his greatest gift of all in his letter to me? And he was very excited to give it to me, and actually he's he's very proud of me. He was very proud of me before he died. Um, he believes that I'll continue the family legacy. Can you believe it, Lewis? Can you believe that he believes in me? I, I loved that man. He was an excellent grandfather, and he's so awesome. I'm glad that you remember him. However, don't you ever fucking speak ill of my grandfather or that house, because he loved that house, and I love him. So, so just watch yourself, Lewis, says Aubrey. After recovering from her um, <clears throat> bout of aggression, she turns around, heads straight into Pierre's shop, and meets a man in the grocery store with luxurious and well-groomed hair and dark green eyes. His name is Elliot. Ah, the new farmer we've all been expecting, and whose arrival has sparked many a conversation. He says, I'm Elliot. I live in the little cabin by the beach. It's a pleasure to meet you, he says. As he sort of breathes and then turns back and stares at the grocery store. Stares at the stuff on the on the counters, on the aisles. Uh it's a little bit concerning. But I'm not judging. So, um, thinks Aubrey to herself. Hmm. Ooh, cauliflower seeds. Yes, we want these, says Aubrey. She buys three packets of cauliflower seeds from um, from Pierre here and promptly turns around and leaves because these cauliflowers need to be planted soon because they take a long time to grow. There are five more people, apparently, that Aubrey has not greeted. Who are these people? Potentially, they may be found in the library. Aubrey decides to go and investigate the library. Oh no, here comes Penny. She would, be, she would have been coming from the library, which is where two children would have been studying for their exams. Hey, there's um, Sam over there. She th thinks Aubrey as she moves around. Um, I suppose I will meet the rest of the people later on. She, she thinks. And she resigns to just head straight home and plant these cauliflowers and um, get prepared for the next few days. She checks up on Leah's house. She's still not allowed inside. Uh, and 
instead of looking around for Leah, she just decides to go straight into Marnie's ranch. Oh! Jazz is um, aloof, yet polite, I suppose. She's reading a book. She's an excellent student. And Marnie is in here. Hi, need something? She says. I might be getting some different kinds of animals in the future. Although, I'll need to make sure there's a market for them, so you'll have to prove your skill with animals first, she says. Just keep treating your animals with respect and good things will happen, she says. Alright, Marnie. After all, I have never hurt an animal with my own hands in my entire life, unless you count flies and perhaps those little worms that poke their heads out of the ground when there's something underneath. I'm fairly certain that those worms die when I when I pick them up, Marnie. Continues, uh, Aubrey continues. However, I'm fairly certain that no one gives a flying fuck about worms, she says. And she heads straight into the plot, the farm plot. And she... She digs out three zones for the cauliflowers to grow. She then heads off to get the water can, because all of her crops need water. They've all been watered, except for the cauliflowers, which she has just planted. Okay, fantastic. Looks like everything is in order. So, without further ado, <coughs> Aubrey puts away the rest of her stuff and heads off straight to bed. Go to sleep for the night? Yes.